Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to paint a watercolor gingerbread man. Let's get started. So to start out, I have already sketched out my gingerbread man. I erased my lines so that it is very lightly visible because once I put the paint on, I there's no way I'm going to be able to take that pencil mark away. If you'd like details on how I drew out my gingerbread man, head over to my blog. I will have a link in the description box below, and over there you can get details on exactly how I drew him. So we're going to start with our size 6 round brush. And for this painting, we are only going to be using two colors. We are going to be using brown and we are going to be using white. And for this one, it's going to be a little bit different because we are going to be using white acrylic paint instead of white watercolor. But you can use white watercolor straight out of the tube. I'll explain that more when we get to that point. So you want to start with a very thick wash of, of brown paint. And what you're going to do is you're going to apply it everywhere except for where you have your frosting area sketch out. So like I'm going to avoid these lines. I'm going to avoid the eyes, the mouth, and the buttons. So I'm going to start with the tips of his feet. And you can use a smaller brush too, depending on how large your sketch is. You don't have to use the same size brush as I am. I do recommend using a brush um, with a nice pointed tip, a brush that comes back to the point very easily. I love Princeton Snap Brushes. These are the best brush that I've used in all the years that I've done watercolor. So basically you're just filling in your sketch as you would like a coloring page. So right here I'm going to just go along that line again. I'm going to get a little bit more paint on my brush and just kind of keeping it at a good in-between mixture. I don't want it to get too dark but I don't want it to be too light. I want it to blend pretty well throughout my gingerbread man. You can always re-go over a section just to keep it wet. And I'm very carefully going to go around my circles to the button area. That again. I'm going to get a little bit more paint on my brush. And I'm dabbing off any extra water that's on my brush so that when I'm bringing it back to my painting, it's not just pooling water everywhere. So I'm going to finish this area down here first before I move up into the head. Just filling it in which makes this part of the tutorial just so easy. Honestly, this tutorial is perfect for beginners or just anyone who wants to paint this cute little gingerbread man. It's just so easy with the steps. You're just filling in your sketch. I'm gonna get a little bit more water, dabbing off extra, and I'm just gonna kind of reactivate right up here just so it doesn't look a little too weird when I go back in just kind of pulling this over and I'm gonna get more brown paint back on my brush and the better quality paper you have the longer your paint is gonna stay wet so that is something to consider when you're buying your paper And don't worry if you do get weird blooms with your paint. You can just go back over it with a single layer 
and cover up those blooms if you don't like how that looks. So I'm going to very carefully go around his eye. Same thing with his mouth, just very carefully going around. Another trick you can use is masking fluid. With masking fluid, you just cover the spaces that you want to stay white, and then you can paint over that masking fluid, you can touch it, and then it'll preserve that space. And all you have to do is peel the masking fluid off, and you have a nice, clean white space underneath to paint or do whatever you want to in that space with. If you want to leave it white, it's a very nice tip. I love using masking fluid. But for this painting, I wanted to show you that you don't have to use masking fluid to keep white space. It does take just a little bit longer because you're being a little bit more careful to make sure that those spaces stay white. So now I'm going to go back in and fill in the tips of his hands because we left those while we filled in his center. Because these areas, they're not going to touch the middle area of the gingerbread man. So we can apply this without having to worry about blending. It'll just save us some ease of making sure everything stays wet. But that's one reason why I love watercolor. I love the fast pacedness, the fact that you don't have to wait so long for everything to dry. And then I also, I use a heat gun to heat up my layers to dry them quicker. And I can get it done in one step. One go, not one step, but one go. Just curve that out. All right, and there we have our base layer for our gingerbread man. So we're gonna let him completely dry, and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna add some finishing details. All right, now we are going to use white acrylic paint you can also use white gouache or you can use white watercolor straight out of the tube without watering it down because with this step we want it to be very thick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my small detail brush and without putting any water on it, I'm going to fill it up with that white acrylic paint. And then I'm just going to treat my little gingerbread man like he was a real cookie, and I'm just gonna fill in the areas where I want the white frosting. And you're just gonna fill it all in. You can also use different colors if you want, you don't have to do white. I'm thinking I'm going to switch his buttons and I'm gonna make them red instead of white, just for some contrast. And I'm gonna fill in down here. You can also use a white gel pen, especially if you left the areas white like we did. You don't have to have this paint. I have noticed though, if you will use white, a white gel pen and try to put it over the watercolor, at least the kind I got did not work as well as, as I was hoping. They ended up just kind of picking up the paint and turning into an off-white color of whatever I had painted beneath. But for this, white, a white gel pen would work well. Just like that. 
gonna add a little bit more to his eyes. Okay, and since I used white acrylic paint, I need to clean my brush off right away or it's going to become as hard as a rock. And then once you clean off your brush, even if the paint is still wet, we're gonna dip back in to our brown paint mixture. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create some shadows. So even if your paint's still wet, just very lightly with the tip of your brush, kind of go around not the whole eye, but just the right side kind of curved to give it a shadow so it doesn't look just flat. Okay, and then we're going to do the same thing with the mouth and do a little bit more up here. Just leaving that little top left area without the shadow. We're going to go right in under the mouth. Like that. And we're going to curve around. And we're gonna do just a little bit more around the mouth. Just making sure none of my paint is gonna dip off. So. Just go all the way around the mouth like that. And then what I'm gonna do, clean my brush. And then I'm just gonna blend since my white acrylic paint is still wet, I'm just going to blend that a little bit. Just blend that in. give it a little bit of a shadow. So I got a little bit more brown in the white, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back into my white acrylic paint, and I'm just gonna add some fresh white right on top of that. And just freshen that up. And then I'm gonna clean my brush. I'm going to do the same thing for um, the arms and the feet. Okay. So just very gently, I'm going to add it down here, right around the rim. Not too much, just enough to make it look um, curved with a shadow. So with this side, I'm not going all the way up. I'm just going halfway. Do the same thing right down here. And same right there. I'm going to repeat that for all of them. You're gonna want the one that's closer to the inside. To go up just a little bit higher than the one on the outside. Just to give it, like I said, that shadow. All right, so now we are going to paint in the buttons. And with that, we're gonna use a really dark mixture of red 
and this we're going back to watercolor. So just mix together a really dark mixture and then just go in and fill in those circles. So right now my red is coming out really light. I'm going to add more pigment to my mixture because I do not want them to be this light. I want it to be very, very dark. And if you feel like just adding more pigment isn't really working, it's too watered down, just let this layer dry. And then you can come back in with a darker coat. No matter what, if you add more layers, it's going to get darker. Just like that. Now we are going to let this part dry, the buttons dry, and then we're going to come back and we're going to add those shadows again to the buttons. So now we're going to add the shadow lines to the buttons, just how we did it before. We're just going to take some of the darker brown paint mixture on our brush, and we're just going to curve around the right side, just curved up top, leaving the left open. go. So we're going to give him a little bit of a shadow and all we're going to do is use clean water and we're just going to kind of go around the gingerbread man. You don't you want to be careful not to touch what you've already painted. Just use, using clean water, just drag it all the way around. This step is completely optional. If you like your gingerbread man just on a white page, then you are good to go. You can make it into a cute Christmas card or a cute little gift for a little girl's room. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna dip into our Payne's Gray, a very light mixture, just a very, very soft gray. Dab off any extra water. And we're just gonna tap it in around this wet area. Just to give it a nice background shadow. Just cause I can't, I like having that depth instead of just having it on a white page. You could do this in any color too if you wanted to um, have a cute red background or a green background to really contrast with the red buttons to make it very Christmassy. You could totally do that. Instead of just doing gray, you could make it more of a festive theme. So just go 
going around. Over here, it already really dried. So I'm gonna take more water. I'm just gonna activate this area. Being very careful not to touch my already in place gingerbread man. Just kind of going in like that, dragging that up and around. Take like little indents. I'm gonna use water, drag this out and around. Cause again, I just want this to be light. You don't need to fill in the entire wet area. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my larger brush and I'm gonna go all around it like in a square. And I'm gonna blend it out so it doesn't look like we have a little gray egg surrounding our gingerbread man. It'll really blend out into the clean water instead of giving it a sharp border. And then if you want, just kind of play around, add little details where you want. And then there you go. We have a nice little background. And then I'm going to show you one more step. Once this dries, I'm going to add splatter over the entire page just to kind of finish it off and give it a cute Christmassy look, in my opinion. But again, it's optional. If you like it the way it is, then you are good to go. So now what we're going to do is add splatter over our entire painting. But I am going to put down a scrap piece of paper over my gingerbread man because I want to keep him from getting completely splattered. So I just added a lot of water and a lot of paint to my brush, and I just take it over my painting and tap. Just tap all the way around. And there you go. And then I like to check And then you can go in a little bit, just gently around it closer. Just, this is off, optional, because if you don't, if you really don't want to get your little guy splattered. But there we go. And there you have a cute gingerbread man with watercolors. Hey everyone, thanks for painting with me today. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any more of my upcoming videos. If you'd like any extra details on this painting, like the specific paint colors that I used or the supplies that I used, head over to my blog, Reflecting Creation. I will have a link in the description box below. Bye!